Welcome to part four of my Revit tutorial on creating a model of Calatrava's uh, Lisbon railway station roof. So this is the structure that we created last time and uh, we're going to add some struts to that which will really test Revit's ability to nest repeaters. So we need to go back to the individual one eighth component we created previously and select the structural elements and I'm going to temporarily hide those so that we can see what we are doing. So the first thing we need to do is to start adding some points and we will put the host those onto the arc and then onto these two reference lines. and we will select these three points and we need to control where they are, are along the uh, lines or arc. So I'm going to associate their normalized curve length to a proportion called segment proportion and I will explain how that, how and why that is controlled a little bit later. So we're going to select those three and those ones we want to measure from the end so that we actually can have the same value associated and use that same parameter. So they're all now a fixed proportional distance from the end. So the next step is to draw some reference lines. So we'll draw a reference line and we need to make sure that 3D snapping is on. So we snap to that point, and then to that one, escape, and then from that one to that one and escape. Then we need a reference arc. So from that hosted point, to that one and then back to this intersection point and then we can add some divided paths to these li reference lines and I'm going to do them one by one so that we can see what's happening pick the arc divided path now the reason for uh, creating these additional host points and then additional reference lines and arcs on top of the other ones is because we want the reference, uh, sorry, the divided path to start in by one segment length at each end because we're going to draw our struts from this point to this one to this one and we want those to be away from the ends, from the adaptive points. So we are now ready to uh, associate the number of divisions. So I've got what the arc select, the arc divided arc path on the arc selected. So I'm going to associate its number to the number of struts. And then I will select the two divided path lines and likewise associate those to the same number of struts and then we will flex this to check that it's working make this 20 just to try it out apply and it looks like it's done it so that's good so we'll cancel that and then I'm going to undo because it's going to be much easier to see what you're doing when you only got relatively few nodes to snap to. So now we have to create the, the strut component. So the easiest thing to do is to actually go back to a component we created last time, save that. That was a, just a, a tube, two point, two adaptive point tube. We want to save that as a three point V shaped strut. And uh, you can do the save bit on your own. So I'm going to place an additional point, then I'm going to select that 
and I'm going to turn that into an adaptive point. Then I'm going to draw a reference line, make sure I've got 3D snapping on from that point back to adaptive point two. Now I am going to add two more hosted points onto the reference line. I'm going to select that one and make its visibility always for the reference planes and I'm going to change its normalized curve parameter to a segment length and it's measured from the beginning and I'm going to associate that to offset from end which has been set up which will allow for a, a joint at the end there and I pick this other hosted point make that always visible for the reference plane set this to segment length this time I have to set it to end so it's measuring from the end offset from end now I am going to draw draw a reference circle onto one of those points but first I have to set the work plane to be the reference plane of that point snap to the point draw a circle grab its temporary dimension click on it to make it a real dimension select the dimension associate it to radius which is already set up for this tube here and then we'll do the same thing on the other point reference circle set work plane to that reference plane snap to the point draw a circle change its temporary dimension to a real one select it associate it to radius and now we can select the reference circle and the other reference circle so control select and then I want to select the reference line that those are hosted on so tab to make sure I've only got one reference line and then control select so I've now got three elements selected and I can create form and there we have it so just grab the adaptive point to make sure that it is flexing properly and we can load that into our one eight family there and it will overwrite and then create component now you have to be a little careful of what you're doing here we want to place this on the divided path nodes and I'm going to avoid the end one because there's an additional point there so I'm going to go in by one and pick this node here on the arc and then I'm going to do the same thing in one from the end on the divided path on the longest line snap to that node and then in from the end there snap to that node and escape because we only want to place one and you can see that that is hosted on there selected and go to the repeat command and hey presto we have a repeater with those struts each one has varied lengths for both arms and the angle changes on each one so very simple to create with an adaptive component so that is our family we better just flex it i guess we already did before but just to prove that it's working apply 12 struts instead of six and there we go so I might just undo that and then we can 
restore the visibility of our structural elements. And we can load this. Oh, actually, one thing before we load it in to the other family. If I hide this again for a moment, you can see these little blue nodes. They are going to show up in the other family when we load it in, and they will show up in the project. And there is no way to hide them in the project. So you need to hide them here. So what we do is we select the divided path, and then we go to one of Revit's most hidden commands, path representation. Click on that, hide the nodes, and then we'll do the same for the other. Now the easiest way to select this is going to be drag across there and filter, check none, and divided path and path representation. You may wonder why I didn't select all three at once, because if you try that, your path representation tool is not available. It's very annoying, so you have to do them one by one. So path representation modes, and there we have it, and restore the visibility. Can't really see much difference because the nodes are actually kind of hidden inside the structure but they will show somewhere somehow in the project so it's best to hide them first so load that into our structural column component override overwrite the existing yes because it exists in there without the struts it also has shared families for the tubes and the profiles so it's asking for this. It doesn't really matter whether we override them or not. And it's going to take a little while because it's got to figure out all the geometry with the struts and the repeaters there. But that's looking pretty good. And uh, we might just want to flex the number of struts on there. We have to actually go to the family browser to find the family there, go to its type properties and maybe make that 8 and you might try changing the uh, arc offset as well just see what happens and apply this is going to take a little while to think it through but uh, considering the amount of time it took to actually create the whole structure it's uh, pretty quick so making these little adjustments is no great drama so there we have it our structure with all the struts so the next task is going to be to put a little base on there and then assemble that but that's all for today.